Welcome back. In continuation to the last lecture, where we discussed uh, in general about uh, uh, Kripke semantics, and then we have seen that uh, uh, Kripke uh, structure or a relational structure uh, consists of set of possible worlds and accessibility relation, which tells us how these possible worlds are connected to each other, and then. Uh, the other thing which you need to have is the valuation function which assigns some kind of values to the atomic propositions that exist in your given modal logical formula. So, let us consider some simple examples uh, in this uh, uh, lecture uh, you know, to see uh, when a given modal logical formula uh, is considered to be uh, true. So, let us start with uh, some simple relational structures and see how a given modal logical formula uh, is true or false. Uh, let us say you have for Kripke uh, structure, uh, we have we need we require this thing. Kripke model consists of set of possible worlds which has to be non empty and R is an accessibility relation and V is a valuation function. So, here is uh, a kind of a relational structure where we have uh, like this uh, A and B are true. Uh, in a given world W1 and uh, in case of uh, W2, uh, let us assume that uh, uh, C is true. So, now uh, we are trying to find out whether um, necessity of A implies B and A implies B. So, we want to know which one is going to be true in this partic uh, particular kind of relational structure. So, now uh, uh, we need to write like this our set of worlds are like this W1 and W2 and then accessibility relation there is only one world which is accessible to the other one W1 uh, accessible to W2. So, this is the only thing that we have and then valuation function uh, is this that. Uh, a and B are true in with respect to W1 and uh, with respect to W2 C is true. So, now A implies uh, B. Uh, uh, when this A implies B is considered to be necessarily true. So, uh, there is one more thing which uh, you need to note. So, uh, in this uh, accessible relation W1 is also accessible to uh, itself. So, this is another kind of accessibility uh, in the accessibility relation we have this also. So, now A implies B uh, in all the worlds in which uh, assuming that uh, this is the case. So, in all the worlds in which uh, this world is accessible to uh, in that world your A implies B has to be true. So, what is uh, this uh, A implies uh, uh, B? So, A implies B is nothing but not A or B. So, the worlds which are accessible from this one are this and even this also. So, now you have, you have to have not A or B has to be true here and it, it has to be true here also. So, with respect to this world if at least one disjunct is true it does not matter whether A is true or false your A in plus B is true that means A in plus B is true here. Now, we need to check whether A in plus B is true here or not. Since both A, B are true here, so that means uh, this A in plus B is true here also. So, what we have seen, what we are seeing it here is, is that necessity of A in plus B. That means A in plus B uh, is true here and A in plus B is true in this world also. That means it is true in all possible worlds that we have. So, that is the reason why this necessity of A holds here. Now, coming back to this one. A implies uh, uh, necessity of uh, B. So, now um, uh, when it comes to this one, uh, we are evaluating uh, A implies uh, necessity of B here. So, now with respect to this, uh, in this world for example, A is already true uh, and then uh, B is true here and B is true here also. That means, uh, even necessity of B is also true. So, that is why this formula uh, A implies necessity of B is true here. So, in both cases uh, uh, it holds. Uh, so, now coming back to this one with respect to this world A implies B, uh, A implies necessity of B holds, but now what about this one? 
So, there is another world which is accessible to uh, this W1. So, what essentially you are trying to do is you are evaluating this formula A implies necessity of B. Uh, now, uh, this means in all the possible worlds in which A is true, your necessity of B has to be uh, true. Uh, so, uh, this is going to be like this. So, the idea of uh, doing it is, is that whether a necessity of A in plus B, that is what we have uh, seen in the uh, last few lectures that what is going to be the scope uh, of your necessity operator? Is it this one? This is considered to be correct kind of conclusion, the correct kind of uh, translation or uh, suppose if you use it in a narrow sense, uh, it is same as this one. So, when the confusion arises, you need to uh, uh, work on, work with both the translations. Now, uh, A implies uh, uh, necessity of B. So, this is same as not A or uh, necessity of B. So, now uh, not A has to be true here, but A is true here. Now, this becomes false here. Now, necessity of uh, B, uh, necessity of B in those worlds in which uh, this B is true. Uh, so, B is true here and even B is true here as well. So, in those cases, uh, in this particular kind of example, of course, uh, these two, uh, uh, both the formulas are going to be true because A is the antecedent of this conditional is already false there. So, A is true, but you have, you need to have, uh, sorry, in not A or uh, necessity of B, uh, not A is already false and then necessity of B, since necessity of B is true, be why? Because uh, if you uh, evaluate necessity of B here, B is true here and B is true here as well. Suppose if you are, uh, if you have this particular kind of thing, instead of uh, B, you have C here. So, what is going to happen to uh, this one, not A? Uh, and necessity of B. So, now in this case A is going to be false because uh, not A is going to be false because A is true here. That means not A is going to be false and necessity of B. Uh, there is a possible world which is accessible from this one, but B is not true there. So, in those cases uh, this will also become false. So, in with respect to this relational structure, uh, now, consider the necessity of A implies B. So, now A implies B definitely it is uh, true here, uh, whereas again in this case uh, in all the possible worlds, uh, so necessity of A implies B means A implies B has to be true here. So, again this is not the case, so it might be false there also. So, the idea here is, is that uh, uh, sometimes, uh, I mean it is not always the case that necessity of A implies B uh, is same as uh, A implies uh, necessity of B. So, you have to use this necessity operator over the whole conditional rather than uh, you use it in the narrow sense. Um, so, let us consider some more examples uh, uh, so that you know we will understand uh, when a given modal logical formula. Uh, is true uh, with respect to a given uh, structure, relational uh, structure. So, let us uh, draw another uh, relational structure uh, which is going to be like this. So, we start with some simple examples and then we will see how, how we can do it. So, let us say you have a world W1 and you have a W2 and there is another world which is considered to be W3. So, now here P is true and here not P is true for example. So, now with respect to uh, W2 we are trying to evaluate this particular kind of formula. Necessity of P uh, uh, is true in a world W2. We are checking whether necessity of P is true in a world W2 or not. So, necessity of P is true in a world W2 means in all the possible worlds this has this is accessible to. In those worlds, P has to be true, but P is false here. 
that means uh, this does not hold with respect to W2 and with respect to clip K model necessity of P does not hold. But with respect to W1 for example, you are evaluating uh, this formula necessity of P with respect to W1. So now the world which is accessible to W1 is W2 only, the next nearest kind of world which is accessible to this one is W2. In that world P is true, that means uh, this holds and there is no other world which is accessible to W1. So in that case uh, the necessity of P is going to be true there. So now what about uh, uh, W3? So now you are evaluating uh, necessity of some formula with respect to W3. Here is the interesting situation uh, which arises here. So this W3 is not accessible to any other world. So if that particular kind of thing happens, then whatever formula that begins with the necessity operator is going to be vacuously true and any formula which starts with the possibility operator is going to be false there. So in that context, the necessity uh, of P is going to be true there, uh, whereas possibility of P it does not hold in W3. So this is the rule that we uh, which we use it in modal logic. If there is no world which is accessible to a given world W3 that is empty kind of thing, then whatever uh, formula starts with the necessity kind of operator is going to be true there, whereas all the formulas that begins with the possibility operator is going to be uh, uh, false there. So in that context possibility of P does not hold in W3. Uh, so there are other things like uh, suppose if uh, this is accessible to this one. So now again the things uh, changes here, uh, now if you are evaluating uh, for example coming back to this formula necessity of P with respect to W1. So in a world which W1 has access to your P is true but now here W1 is accessible to W1 but we do not know whether it is uh, true or false. So you uh, this need not have to follow from this one W necessity of P does not follow uh, uh, in the case of W1 if this is accessible to uh, itself. So let us consider a simple straightforward uh, example uh, with which you will see whether uh, how to evaluate uh, formulas uh, given modal logical formula with respect to this relational structure. So here are the worlds that we have W2 uh, and uh, here is W1 uh, and then this is accessible to um, let us say W3. Uh, and W3 is accessible to W5. Uh, uh, in that W5, we will see which one is uh, which formula is going to be true there. So now W5, uh, this is W6. Uh, so we have uh, the different set of worlds from W1 uh, to W6. So now uh, this is accessible to this one W1 is accessible to W1 and then we have some other world which is considered to be W4 and this is accessible to itself and then W3 is accessible to this one that is why we are putting arrow towards this one uh, and W5 is accessible to this. So this is the relational structure that we have it is not complete but we need to uh, we have only drawn how these possible worlds are related to each other. But we need to say uh, what are the atomic sentences that are true in these worlds. So now we have some formulas B is true here, A is true here and it so happened that A is accessible to this one uh, and uh, uh, A is true here and then A is true here, B is true and then B is true here. So now we have some kind of relational structure. So now we are trying to talk about uh, some formulas like uh, I will talk about only one formula so that is this one necessity of necessity of A uh, with respect to any world that you take into consideration. If this formula holds in all possible worlds then 
this is you have to write it like this, this is considered to be a tautology. If it is not the case, if at least in one world it is false, then this formula does not hold in all worlds. So now we, we need to check in which, I, as I said in the last class, Kripke is talking about uh, various levels of truth, one at the level of possible worlds, which world it is true, uh, and then you talk about uh, truth of a given formula with respect to a frame and then a model W, R and V. So now uh, let us assume that you know this is the Kripke model and then we are trying to see, this is a question mark, whether uh, with respect to W1, uh, this is the W1, now we are evaluating that particular kind of formula whether it is true or not. So now this is considered to be a conditional statement and uh, the semantics uh, is same for the uh, material, it is uh, same as the material implication that is like this x and y, x implies y that means t, t, f and f, t, f and t, f. If you understand one example in a better way, you understand the other examples automatically. So uh, this formula is going to be false only in this case, in all other cases it is true. So that means the whole formula necessity of A, necessity, mm, that it is necessary implies that it is necessarily necessary. Um, this is going to be true, it is going to be false only uh, in this case. That means uh, your antecedent is true and the consequent is false, then this formula is going to be false in that particular kind of world. Otherwise, it is going to be true. So that means if you if you can make the consequent, consequent is this thing y, uh, consequent true or false, uh, consequent is true, then obviously your uh, x implies y is going to be true. So now let us see uh, what is necessity of A with respect to this. So all the worlds which are accessible to this one, in those worlds your A has to be true. Of course that is indeed the case. So that means necessity of A is true there. So now in this world, the world which is accessible to one to this one is this and even this also. So that is why in those worlds A is true. So that means uh, necessity of A is going to be true there. So now we need to check whether necessity of necessity of A is true or not. Now what are the worlds which are accessible to W1, uh, W2, W3. So now if you if you are trying to talk about necessity of necessity of A here, so then uh, you need to move to this world where it will become necessity of A. One necessity you can uh, remove it and the necessity of A has to be true here and necessity of A has to be true here also. Now we need to evaluate whether necessity of A is true uh, with respect to this. Of course, this is the case, necessity of A is, uh, this is the only world which is accessible to this one and in that world A is already true, that means necessity of A holds here. Now we need to check whether necessity of A also holds here also in W3. So now what are the worlds which are accessible to W3? Uh, w5 and uh, w4 and in those worlds uh, a has to be true because necessity of a is true in a world w3 means in all the worlds which are accessible to w3 your a has to be true. So in this world uh, it is true but in this case uh, it is not the case that uh, a is true. So for that reason uh, this uh, formula does not hold because in one particular kind of, although this uh, antecedent is true, in one particular occasion, particularly necessity of necessity of A is going to be false here because necessity of A, uh, although it is true here, but when it comes to this one, it is going to be false. So that is why with respect to M1, it does not follow. If it does not hold in one possible world, of course, uh, that is good enough to say that uh, it does not hold in uh, the Kripke model. Kripke model consists of uh, uh, this in this particular kind of frame. Frame is, is that uh, a given uh, uh, set of worlds and then how these worlds are related to each other that constitutes a, a particular kind of frame. So many such kind of examples can be given and then the only thing you need to notice is that there, if there is no world which is accessible to uh, the given world, then all the formulas which starts with the necessity are going to be true and all the formulas which are starting with the possibility are uh, they turn out to be false. Um, uh, let us consider some examples where you know uh, uh, how when this, uh, now Kripke talks about all the modal logical systems 
uh, K, T, D, S4, S5, etc. And then now he is uh, trying to talk about under what conditions uh, the given uh, uh, theorem holds. Uh, for example, uh, in this case, let us talk about uh, this one. So, let us take the simple uh, example that is a T axiom, so which states that uh, necessity of P implies uh, P. So, how do we uh, check uh, whether uh, this is definitely not valid in K? Uh, you can easily come up with a counter example uh, where uh, you can you, are, you can construct a counter example where uh, necessity of P is true, but uh, uh, P is considered to be false there. So, now here is a counter example, uh, let us say you have W1 and W2. Uh, let us say you have uh, accessibility relation like this W1 R W2, uh, here is a set like this and then valuation function is like this that P is false here and P is true in W2. So, now uh, this does not hold in K, but it holds in, uh, 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 it holds only when you view reflexive relation in, uh, if you view accessibility relation as reflexive, otherwise it is going it is not going to hold. For example, in this case, this is this is serving as a counter example. Why? Because uh, with respect, uh, suppose if you are evaluating a conditional like this, necessity of P is going to be true there. The antecedent necessity of P means in all the worlds which are accessible to uh, uh, this one, P is true. And now, uh, whereas, one second, so this has to be uh, like this. P and not P. In all the worlds, uh, okay, this will do. Uh, in, in all the worlds which it is accessible to it, uh, your P is true, that is necessity of P is true, but here uh, not P is false. So, that means necessity of P is true and uh, not P is false, that is why this makes the whole conditional false. So, now one final remark is, is that uh, now Kripke was uh, trying to understand, I mean, uh, of course, using Kripke semantics. Uh, we can, uh, uh, what we can say about this particular kind of formula. Uh, uh, in K definitely this formula does not hold because of this particular kind of example. So, now what happens uh, if you take uh, an accessibility relation to be some kind of reflexive relation? A world W1 is accessible to itself. Uh, then uh, this is, is going to be viewed in a totally different way. Uh, so, uh, in those cases, uh, if your accessibility relation is considered to be reflexive, uh, then the same kind of formula necessity of P implies P uh, might hold. So, uh, now Kripke was trying to understand these more various modal logical systems uh, K, T, D, S4 and S5 uh, and now he is trying to uh, uh, come up with uh, uh, some kind of constraints on the accessibility relation and then he says that. Uh, T for example, holds in the reflexive frames, whereas uh, D holds in serial kind of frames and then S4 holds in transitive frames and S5 holds uh, only when, when the accessibility relation is reflexive, symmetric and transitive. So, in the next class, we will be talking about these uh, examples in much more uh, greater detail. Uh, then I will be talking about uh, uh, what exactly we mean by possible worlds and what, uh, what you mean by uh, saying that uh, is there any distinct uh, difference between logical necessity, physical necessity, something which is necessarily true with respect to necessarily holds with respect to some kind of law statements that is nomic necessity, uh, what kind of necessity that modal logics particularly the ones which are trying to talk about talks about. We talk about only uh, allithic modalities, uh, it looks like that you know we are using metaphysical necessity or logical necessity. So, I will continue with this discussion when I talk about the, uh, when I talk about possible worlds and its connection with uh, a different kind of view which uh, treats these possible worlds as real and this position is called uh, modal realism which is due to David Lewis. We will continue with this thing in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.